Hi, I'm Teddy Burris, your LinkedIn strategist and trainer. I'm also a networking strategist. And what that means is I want to guide people in the best practices and tactics of networking effectively. And I got asked this question recently, or got said this to me. It's one of my, uh, somebody I was having a conversation with said, Teddy, I don't know how to network. And you know, I get that. There are a lot of people who don't know how to network. And if you really had a, never had a purpose, the important word, if you really never had the purpose for networking, then you don't know how to do it or you don't know really what it is. So I just want to share with you um, 11 tips that I think can help guide you if you've never networked before or if you struggle with networking or are afraid of networking. I just want to share some tips that might be able to help you become a better networker. So first of all, there's an edict that I live by. And I wrote this edict back in, I think it was 2012, 2000, early 2013, when I was writing my first book titled Networking for Mutual Benefit. And here's what the edict is. More like a definition is how I wrote it. Networking is finding, developing, and nurturing relationships. Listen to that. Networking is finding, developing, and nurturing relationships that mutually move people forward through life. Pretty straightforward to me. It's, it's all about getting into conversations, and it's not about selling. It's not about asking for a job. It's about finding, developing, and nurturing relationships that help each other. If you can grasp that philosophy, stick that edict in you and figure out ways to practice that, it'll take you a long way. It has taken me a long way through my career and helped my business to grow significantly. Here's another perspective. If it hurts, you're doing it wrong. Look, if you go out and you practice networking, and, you, and you're like, man, I'm just uncomfortable doing this. Or, you know, I feel, what was the word I, I hear? I feel creepy doing this. Then that's not networking. You're trying to sell your crap. Or you're trying too hard. If, you, if, you're not, if, you're, if it hurts doing it, you're trying too hard. If it feels creepy, you're trying to sell. So really look at what you're doing and look at how you're doing it. Again, if it hurts in any way, you're not doing it right. Here's number three. Networking is all about humans getting into conversations with other humans. It's not about walking in there with your logo and go, look at my logo. It's not about walking in there with your brochures and doling out brochures of reckless abandon. It's not about doling out business cards like a wild person. It's about two human beings getting into a conversation. Drive it down to that simplest statement. It's two people talking. Maybe they're talking over the phone. Maybe they're talking over Zoom. Maybe they're talking in a bar or standing in line in a grocery food, grocery store uh, uh, checkout counter. Maybe they're standing uh, waiting for the bus. Maybe they're sharing a taxi. It's just two people talking. Where it goes is where it will go. That's important to think about too, but it's really just two humans getting into a conversation. Here's another one that I learned a long time ago. The best way to start a conversation is by asking a friendly and or interesting question. Ask them a question about them. If you're at a networking event, ask them why did they come here? What did they learn about it? If you're on a Zoom call, ask them, have you been on these calls before? If you're in a job search group, why did you come here before and what have you gotten out of it? Ask them friendly questions. Where do you live? Is that an easy drive to here? Um, you know, what's your favorite restaurant and why? By the way, are you a Dallas Cowboy fans or a Washington's fan? I don't know what the question is, but make it friendly. Make it enjoyable. Make it a little different. But when you, when you start a conversation off with a friendly question, that's often referred to as icebreakers. Man, once you get boom through that, the rest of it is easy. Make it easy. Ask a friendly question. Number five, ask and listen. Ask and listen. 
Listening is how you discover ideas, nuggets, perspectives, insights. Listening is how you discover the doors open for more relevant and engaging questions. Listen is how you discover what, what they want to know about you. You've got to ask and listen. Listen intently to be able to figure out how to move the conversation forward. Don't ask a question and then sit there stewing about what's the next question, what's the next question. It'll come if you just give it the opportunity through listening. Number six. You don't need to be a fountain of unbelievably fantastic information. Again, be a human. Nobody expects you to know everything about what's going on in the political scene today, the sports scene today, the weather scenes, the business scene, the economy scene, the job search scenes. Nobody expects you to know everything. Let them peel back the layers and discover what you know based on the engagement and the conversations. And if you don't know the answer to what who won the Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants, I don't, you know what? You don't know. That's okay. You missed that game because you were watching the Panthers play. Or you didn't get a chance to watch a game because you went out and you went golfing or you went hiking. It's okay. It's okay. You do not need to be a fountain of unbelievably fantastic information. Number seven. Listen for permission to talk about yourself before you do so. It's important that you do that. It's okay in the engagement to throw out a piece or two of, you know, relevant to, about you relevant to the conversation, but do not think that just because they took a breath that you have the opportunity to jump in and share all about yourself. You got to wait until you get permission. In good networking, you get permission. I've been doing this for a long time. I started deliberately networking back in 2000. Very intentionally, deliberately networking in 2000. I can tell you, if I wanted to, the, the names of two or three people who I very clearly know never gave me permission to talk about myself. Even though... The expectations were, were two humans getting into a conversation and learning about each other. But wait until you get permission before you talk about yourself because the moment you get permission, they're listening. If you haven't been given permission, they're not listening. It's important. Number eight, share only enough to create more questions. Sh share, peel back a few layers and look and see what, they, what the, the, the visual engagement, the body language engagement is. Don't overshare. None of that TMI stuff. I mean, I've been in those networking events. I've been at those one-on-one -on -one events where somebody who didn't know me at all decided to share with me way too much. And they told me the story about how someone stole their truck and his wife ran away from him and took the dog and how much he absolutely loves her and wishes that one day that his blue tick hound would come back and, you know, how they, he, he got, you know, and fired for embezzling and all of this stuff. You can't do that. You got to leave that stuff in the trunk of the car or in the back of the pickup truck. You can share relevantly, share appropriately. You know, when you get to know the person and become a really good friend, then you can tell them about your dog. But you can't do that with networking today. You, you can't do it with networking in the past when people felt like, like they could. Share relevantly. Share based on the conversation, based on the, the relationship that's developing and see where it goes. And by the way, when you get permission to start sharing, share a little bit and then ask a question. Share a little bit and ask a question. This a conversation is bi-directional, not here's my lecture and here's yours. Thank you very much, let's go home. It's not how it works. It's not how it works effectively. Here's number 10. And this is gonna surprise a lot of people, but this is important. Your goal of networking should be to connect with others. And first and foremost, those that you can help. 
It's called networking for mutual benefit. Connect with people relevant to you. That's absolutely important. But look for ways to help the other person. Because I'm telling you right now, if you look for ways to help that other person, then they're going to want to help you. And they're going to ask you, maybe more specifically, how could they help you? Here's number 11, your second goal. Second goal is to develop the opportunity for a deeper conversation with the right people. To develop a deeper conversation with the right people. Because if you do this right, along the way, as you're networking and looking for ways to help other people and getting introduced to other people, you're going to get into the right conversation with the right people. And then you can make that conversation deeper and richer, and then it can uncover other opportunities. It could uncover an introduction to even yet another person who can be very important and impactful in your life could be developing a deeper conversation to find out that this person knows someone who needs what you have. This person works for a company that it needs what you have, whether it's to hire you or to do work with you or to buy your widget. But your second goal is to develop these opportunities for these deeper conversations. This is what networking is. It's about two humans getting into conversations, looking for ways to help each other uncovering opportunities to dig deeper and learn more and uncovering opportunities to connect with other people who can help move you forward in your life, in your business, in your career. Um, this is, this, it's, it's not, I, I want to say it's not rocket science, it's science, but it is purposeful. It is deliberate. You don't just network anywhere. You network where your target audience, the people who can help you are. You network in relevant groups, relevant community groups, relevant association groups, relevant job search groups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it all, at the end of the day, your, 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 your goal is to have enough of these conversations to develop enough trust, respect, and like so someone can introduce you to the right person who can help move you forward again in your business, in your career, in your life. I want to recommend, I'll put these lists in the, in the YouTube description. There are some books that I think everyone should read if they want to become better at networking. Life, career, and business. You need to read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You need to read Keith Ferrazzi's book, Never Eat Alone. You need to read my book, Networking for Mutual Benefit. I'll put all of these in the YouTube uh, description. Read these books. Consume this and, and, and ask other people for ideas that they have about networking that has been made networking more successful for them. I don't know how to network. It's not a problem unless you don't want to learn. Practice, experiment, take some of these ideas to heart and I hope these ideas help you and I hope you have a great weekend. Before you go, I want to share with you uh, my LinkedIn mastermind group that, is, that has given a lot of people value. I created this group, this private group. It's in a Facebook educational group. It's designed for, uh, for me to share ideas, perspectives, tactics, tips, best practices. There's videos, there's articles in there. There's a, a bi-weekly, every other Friday, we do a live coaching session for all the members. You can ask all the questions you have. I built this group for business developers, salespeople, and even sales trainers and talent development professionals who want to learn enough about LinkedIn to go help others in their organization. So if you want more value out of LinkedIn and you're looking for long-term support, long-term coaching, long-term training of ideas as LinkedIn continues to change, even as Sales Navigator continues to change, then go check out burrisconsulting.com slash group. Check it out. Ask me any questions if you have any questions. And then join us. I guarantee you that you'll get value from it because I want to help you master using LinkedIn as a business tool.